Okay guys, and we're going to be going over the 850 cage now. Um, that is your 999 to 850 certification. Uh, that's kind of the, the 590 class is the new class that's coming out for your, uh, this year. And a lot of guys that are getting in this class are again asking what, what do we need for safety requirements. Uh, we're going to use uh, Richard Nicoletti aka Jersey. Uh, truck as kind of an example. This is a truck that started out as a roll bar truck um, and he ran it down to a 10 at 140 mile an hour and wanted to add more power and go faster so we actually left the roll bar in the truck and added the the additional bars to make it a 10.850 cage. And I'm going to let Lynn kind of go over some of the basics of what are the differences going from roll bar to roll cage um, and it is easier to build a roll cage from the start rather than doing a hoop first and then adding it but there are possibilities like we can show you on this truck. Right. Uh, like he said there are a couple of complications I guess when you want to turn a roll bar into a roll cage. Um, generally when I'm doing a roll cage construction um, I'm, I'll leave the outriggers out until the last thing that way when the bars are in place Pretty much I can, I can hold them up, I can put vice grips on the floor to hold them in place and then I can tack everything in and then when I go to do finish welds up close to the roof I'm able to drop everything down away from the roof and you can get you know complete welds around the top side. Um, kind of what we run into here on a truck like this where it had a previous roll bar is your roll bar is already fully welded in place and you can't get to some of the really tight areas up here in the roof like we're pretty much against the headliner here we tried to fit everything as good as we could so it was really tight but uh, one of the things that that helps in a situation like that is NHRA does make um, they do make an allowance for if you have a situation where you can't complete a weld you can leave as much as 25 percent of the weld out if you gusset um, each each side of the pipe um, with a gusset so that's something that'll help you guys if you're in a tight spot and you can't finish a weld. Um, that's something you can do. Um, just kind of going over the basics, I guess the difference between a roll bar and a roll cage. Um, you guys saw what we had on, on the roll bars that had the six points of construction. Um, the roll cage adds the overhead bars, it adds the roof bar, and then you have front down bars. Um, once again, um, all of these, you know, all of this, this front down bar needs to go to an outrigger that's welded to the frame. Um, the one thing that changes in the language there is a roll bar uh, states that it can be bolted or welded to the frame. An 850 cage can only be welded. It cannot be bolted to the frame. So everything needs to be welded to the frame via an outrigger. Um, Talk a little bit about dash bar. There was some question yeah. if it is required mm -hmm. and show how tight. I don't know, sure. Landon, if you can see how tight you got up in on the dash on this. Well, uh, talking a little bit about going through the dash or around the dash, um, there's a lot of guys that ask what the right thing is to do there. Um, I'm a pretty strong proponent of going through the dash rather than going around it. Um, the reason being is for one you'll see if you go around the dash you have a bar running through this area and it makes your your foot area here pretty tight to get in and out of um, and that's one thing that a lot of uh, NHRA techs are very conscious of is to make sure that you can get in and out of the vehicle quickly if you need to in an emergency um, so for that's one of the reasons I prefer going through the dash the other would be is if you put a bar around your dash, you're never going to get your dash out without completely destroying it. So the people that are worried about, you know, cutting into their dash a little bit to go through their dash, think about the fact that if you go around it, you're never going to get it out without either completely cutting out your roll cage or destroying your dash. So that's kind of uh, my uh, way of thinking on that. As far as the actual dash bar, um, it is a good idea to have a dash bar in um, an 850 cage but it is not required as long as you have a factory firewall so in the trucks that still maintain a dash we do not put a dash bar in it um, I guess uh, going from there um, kind of a little bit with the dash bar thing when you look at the rule books for the NHRA stuff 
you have to keep in mind that a lot of these rules weren't designed with our big heavy 8,000 pound trucks in mind. Um, so anytime that there's a little bit something you can do for extra safety, I encourage you to do it. Um, there's a bar down here underneath the cab. It's called a rocker bar. Um, I don't know if you can duck down in here and see it, but pretty much it's a bar that runs from the rear outrigger to the front outrigger. And it just keep, helps give you extra side protection if you would get in a side impact um, accident. Lane, and see if you can go up and show them the front outrigger. Yeah, there you can see it. Yeah, you can kind of see how the outrigger construction is there. Um, pretty much just the 2x3 two tubing welded to the frame coming out with the bar running down to it. Um, the other question that we get a lot is door bars. Can we have swing out door bars? And in an 850 cage, a swing out door bar is perfectly legal. Um, there's a couple different styles of connectors that you can use. This is a nice chromoly piece that uh, I believe Rhodes Race Car makes. There's a couple of other more inexpensive uh, NHRA certified swing out connections as well. Um, I really like this piece. It just it's a really solid piece, and it doesn't have sharp edges that catch your ribs as you're crawling yes. in and out of the truck. The door bar I have on the quad cab has some sharp edges and uh, you catch it, <laughs> catch your back once on it and then you remember the next one. <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing that gets often asked is the height of the door bar. Um, the way the rule reads um, for a roll, uh, sorry, the height of the door bar, door I don't bar. know what I said. I think I, yeah. You said roll bar. You're right. Um, the way the rule reads for a roll bar or a roll cage which be between it, right the bar needs to pass between a driver's shoulder and elbow um, so this one this door bar is probably welded in at hobbit height um, pretty sure it can it can catch us in that height the normal height guy would probably be a little bit tall for this um, but that is also something that's a little bit um, interpreted differently by different tech guys um, some guys are a little bit more picky with that than others so keep that in mind when you're doing uh, you know your door bars try to keep those up as high as you can um, sometimes you'll end up running off of the main hoop out straight a little bit and then bending it down so that you can get a steeper angle and not have as much bar to trip over down by your feet and that's also set by where your seat height is right. you know so have that stuff in mind before you just weld your bars in and then figure out you need your seat high enough to so your short people can actually see over the steering wheel and then it doesn't then your tech guy doesn't give you a sticker. The other question that gets asked some is, do I have to have you know, the high bar coming out of my back window? Uh, there is a way around that. Um, if you put in an SFI, um, put in a funny car cage that meets SFI requirements, you can get around having the high back brace. Mm -hmm. um, you can get to the point where you can keep all your piping below the bed line. So if somebody's, you know, really trying to have a discreet, uh, you know, street truck, try to sneak up on somebody, that is an option. Um, it does add quite a number of bars inside of the cab. Um, most of you guys know what a funny car cage looks like, but uh, pretty much it's just an enclosure around the driver. Uh, that stuff is all covered in the NHRA rule book. And uh, yeah, that's, I think, pretty much covers that part of that. Thank you.